For me, Peru was the great Inca civilizations, Machu Picchu, the Andes. And yet 300 years ago, the capital of Lima was considered a black city. To find out what happened to all those black people, I'm starting with the only one I've ever heard of. Susana Baca was born and raised in a seaside town outside Lima. Today she's an international music star, but she's devoted years to researching Afro-Peruvian music traditions. I began with my mother. I asked her to tell me things about her life. After that, I interview my aunties, and after that I travel through Peru, especially along the coastline where the Afro-Peruvians had settled. I almost reached the border with Ecuador, searching for music, poetry, verses. Susana told me that she didn't even realize that she was black and that this might make her different from her classmates until she was in high school. It was terrible. Something happened that was very ugly and very sad for me. When they told us in school that the teacher was going to come to choose the girls who danced very well, I thought, well, I'm going to be chosen because I dance. <laughs> she only chose the white girls, the Indian girls and the black girls did not belong to the dance group. Hmm. What in your environment gave you the strength to overcome racism like that? Our family gathered on Sundays. I would go to where they were playing music, to the uncles playing guitar, the aunties singing, and there I was, in the middle. That was my salvation. And then happily, when I won the Grammy, a lady said, because of her, the world knows about us. This was so beautiful for me to hear. The world knows about Susana Baca, but like me, it probably doesn't know very much about the estimated two million other Afro-Peruvians who live here. In 1854, would another leader, Ramon Castilla, ultimately free the remaining Afro-Peruvian slaves? After abolition, not a lot changed. Just as in the former Confederate states after the Civil War, most of the former slaves became sharecroppers on the very same land they had always worked. 150 years later, there's still many people living in the same places, doing the same work that their slave ancestors did. You know, I've never been this close to cotton before. First time? Could you show me how to pick cotton? So the cotton comes off clean, without a straw, without the little leaves. I got a lot of leaves, so I'm bad. <laughs> What time do you start picking cotton every day? From 4 a.m. in the morning until 6 p.m. in the evening. Can I ask you how much you are paid? 14 soles a day. About five dollars a day. Oh. That's hard work. It's hard, but we have to do it. Because of the fact that we are in need, we have to do it. How old were you when you started picking cotton? When you learned how to pick cotton? I was seven. Do you think your children will pick cotton? Too? No, we don't no, want no, that for no, them. No. It's hard work. It's trabajo difícil. Gracias. Thank you. And take this cotton ball as a souvenir. Cotton from Chincha. Oh, good. Yeah, let's get rid of this. I got my cotton, that's right. <laughs> These workers live in the black town of El Carmen. Most of the town's inhabitants are descended from the slaves of the Hacienda San Jose. Still suffering from extreme poverty, only 27% of the Afro-Peruvian people even finish high school. 
and only 2% get a college education. Racism is everywhere. The blacks are labeled as being those who work in the doorways of hotels or in a restaurant. Or, this black guy dances really well, that's all he's good for, he's not very intelligent. I think that music gives you the strength to fight for what you're saying. Despite the kind of pervasive racism that Chebo describes, last year, the Peruvian government made an unprecedented public apology to its black citizens. We extend an historical apology to Afro-Peruvian people for the abuse, exclusion, and discrimination perpetrated against them since the colonial era until the present. While the government statement doesn't mention slavery explicitly, Peru is the only Latin American country to have apologized to its black citizens for historic racial discrimination, starting in the colonial period, which is when slavery started. I wonder how black activist groups feel about this unprecedented act. It's not an old to say, sorry, no, we need to translate it in public policies to Afro-Peruvian people. I believe that Peru it could be the, the most racist country in Latin America. Monica Carrillo runs LUNDU, the Center for Afro-Peruvian Studies and Advancement. LUNDU campaigns against the kind of racism that black people here encounter every day. There is a character, the name is Negro Mama. Mama in Peruvian, it's no mama, it's no mother, it's mama, it's like a stupid. No. So the name of the character is Negro Mama. Uh, and he paints uh, his face. He's white? He's white. For example. That's, oh my God, that's a Negro Mama? Yes. Oh. So he's playing a stupid black man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he used black gloves like oh. monkey. And he walk like monkey too. That's terrible. This is Negro Mama, no? And all the time he's stealing or he's trying to rape women. This is like minstrel shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't believe it.